All right, Sense of a Kitten and Sam Dante, and here's our review of Tom Clancy's The Division in three minutes or less. Three, two, one, go! Uh, online only. Come on! Set in a post-epidemic New York City, you and up to three other players take on the role of sleeper agents, activated to take back the city from all manner of nutters, escape prisoners, a fire happy cleaners, and some army dudes stand between you and a decent ending. Because, as is the trend, this game doesn't exactly have an ending. You probably have to buy that shit next year in DLC or sequel. Overall, the game does look pretty, despite the fact that it's set in a crapped out version of New York. Ooh, look at the weather effects and the footprints in the snow. In traditional Ubisoft fashion, there are heaps of glitches here to keep you entertained for hours. Magical floating guns, clipping issues, randomly getting kicked out of the game, multiple mics. Who the fuck is Mike? Probably the support guy that has to log this crap. Another one for you, Mike! Oh, God damn it! And there are some scary faces in this character creation and there's only eight faces to choose from for each gender in the first place. Not that it matters much because your character will forever be a stoic, silent <laughs> protagonist. It's like we're playing an RPG from 20 years ago. Please, Cloud, how do you feel about the epidemic? What about that Fei Wong, eh? Still, RPG fans will enjoy the weapon customization, crafting and modding here. Everything you equip helps you build your own unique agent. You can focus on health to be all tanky, firearms for more DPS, electronics for ability strength, or a mixture of all three. It's up to you. My knee pads increase my turret cooldown! I do like how you build up your base of operations. You can see how it develops from a two-bit shack into a proper organised safe house. It also unlocks some nifty perks for your character. The best part of the division is clearly... The jumping jacks, right? No, no, the infinite clapping. I was going to say the setting and the gameplay. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm loving the Splinter Cell style cover system and gadget use. Mix and match your skills and weapons to make your own classes rather than being restricted. Go, my little ball of death, go! <laughs> ah, why didn't I bring my healing grenades? The squad tactics you can pull off with friends in court really make you feel like you're in a real team. Unless you get a pom-pom beanie before Kate, then she'll hate you for life. <laughs> Damn right. Guns. More guns. Wait up, guys. I'm just comparing and modding my gear. But maybe a while. Also, this hobo just dropped their pants for me because I gave them a soda, and I think they're a better colour than I'm wearing. The countless collectibles and the easily missable NPC dialogue give you more story than the scarce main cutscenes ever do. I learnt more about the enemy factions watching developer vids than I did playing the actual game. Ah, the curse of seeking out repetitive side encounters just to level up so you can take on the main missions. Ugh, the grind is real, especially when you reach that level cap and you're just trying to get better gear for challenge modes. Oh joy, overpriced DLC for access to content that's already on their servers? This is all sounding very familiar. Uh -huh. Haven't completely lost faith in humanity yet? Well, try the Dark Zone, an area where other players thrive on screwing you over and stealing your hard-earned loot. I accidentally went rogue because some douche decided to jump in front of your bullets while you are trying to take down a double-eyed NPC? Well, now you're marked for death and there's no penalty for other players to end you. Prepare to lose your gear, money and DZXP. No! Boom! Still enjoying it more than Destiny.